Okay, this will be the last section we do in Chapter 10. It deals with um, recursion and iteration. Um, in the first couple sections of this chapter, we've been dealing with explicit formulas, which pretty much means that we could find any term in the sequence, no matter um, if we had the term before it. You know, we could find a sub 100 um, if we, as long as we knew what the uh, common difference was or the common ratio. Now, this section we're going to focus on recursive formulas which are based on determined by one or more of the previous terms. So we would need to know term before it and sometimes two terms before it. All right? um, here are examples for arithmetic sequence and geometric sequence in a recursive formula. Um, based on arithmetic sequence where we add the common difference to get to the next term, then a sub n is equal to the previous term plus d. All right, understand that a sub n minus 1, think of it as the previous term. Um, if you think about it that way, and you won't get wrapped up in all the notation of it, um, just understand, you know, in, in arithmetic sequence, we're adding something to the previous term. In a geometric sequence, we're multiplying r to get to the next term. Um, we're multiplying r times the previous term to get to the next term. So, again, we're just continuously using that previous term. Um, now, it is essential to be able to uh, find the first five terms and uh, we'll, be ha we'll have a formula to find how the next term is, um, or how to find the next term, excuse me. So, um, if we wanted to find the first five terms, if you wanted to, technically you could count A1 as the first term. And when we go to find A sub 2, we're going to let N be 2. So it's going to be A sub, um, A sub 2 is equal to, negative 3 times a sub 1 plus 6, which is negative 3 times 8 plus 6, which is going to come out to be uh, negative 18. That negative 18 is a sub 2. We're going to use that when we find a sub 3. a sub 3 is negative 3 times negative 18 plus 6. This is going to come out to be uh, positive 60. We're going to use that 60 when we go to find a sub 4. a sub 4 is going to be negative 3 times a sub 3. Well, we just found a sub 3 at 60. Plus 6. And um, that's going to come out to be negative 174. And then a sub 5 is going to be negative 3 times negative 174 plus 6. Uh, let's see here. That's going to be positive, positive what? Um, uh, 5, 24 plus, no, not 524, 522 plus 6, which is 528. So the first five terms are 8, negative 18, 60, negative 174, and 528. Um, you'll notice that uh, 8 got plugged in for a sub 1, negative 18, we had to use that when finding a sub 3. Uh, 60, which was a sub 3, we had to find use that to find a sub 4. And negative 174, we had to use that to find a sub 5. So it's always the previous term. Okay? If we're finding a sub n plus 1, then the previous term is a sub n. Um, all right, so if we want to write a recursive formula for each one of these sequences, we need to determine um, if it's going to be geometric or uh, arithmetic. So, uh, in this case, let's see if we have a, uh, let's see if we have a common ratio. We obviously do not have a common difference because we're adding 12. 
adding 30, adding 75. So clearly there is no common um, difference, but uh, which means more likely than uh, more likely than we have a common ratio. 20 over 8, that is, uh, what is that, 5 halves, 50 over 20, that's 5 halves, okay, uh, 125 over 50, that's 5 halves, so um, they're all equal to 5 halves, which is our R value, that tells you that R is 5 halves, so it's real easy to come up with the recursive formula, if you want you could say a sub n or a sub n plus 1. It doesn't really matter. Let's see how the book does it. The book does it as a sub n. So a sub n, because it's geometric, is going to be a sub n is going to be the previous term, a sub n minus 1, times r, which is... Uh, five halves. We want to might see this with five halves up front times a sub n minus one. Either way is fine. Okay, in two b, we are adding nine, adding nine, adding nine. So coming up with the um, determining whether it's a common Ratio or common difference, in this case, since we're adding the same number every time, we know that d is 9. So coming up with our formula, it's going to be a sub n is the previous term plus 9. No big deal there. Um, here they tell you that a, the third term is 16 and that r is 4. Well, if they're using r, then obviously then it's geometric, and they're telling you what r is. So there's really no... Um, not much work to be had there. It's going to be a sub n is 4 times previous term, n minus 1, a sub n minus 1. Okay? The last thing in this section is iteration. Iteration is a lot like what we were just doing. This was, this is kind of an, uh, um, an example of iteration, what we did up here, where we took the term, uh, our output from the last one, plugged it into the next one. Uh, that's essentially what using a recursion formula is if you're generating multiple terms. Um, it says repeatedly composing a function with itself. Um, so what you're doing is taking the output and plugging it right back into the same function. Okay, so if we're going to find the first three iterates of um, f of x equals 5x plus 4, you can see this. If we plug in x sub 0, they always have to give you some initial value. There's no way to uh, do this without an initial value. Uh, they tell you that x sub 0 is 2, so you're going to plug in 2 and get 14. Then that 14 is going to go right back into the function, and you're going to get 74. And then that 74 is going to go in... So you're going to get 14, 74, and 374. All right, it's it's really not that much different than what we were doing. Um, it's just kind of somewhat different notation, but really no different than what we were doing on the recursion formula. Um, so if we wanted to find the first three iterates uh, for f of x equals negative 3x plus 8, then what we could do, we know x sub 1 is going to be um, f of x sub 0, which really means we're going to plug in x sub 0 is 8, so negative 3 times 8 plus 8, and we're going to get um, negative 16. Now we're going to take that negative 16 and use that in our x sub 2 value. It's going to be f of x sub 1, and when we find... Um, when we use x sub 1, we're going to take negative 16 and plug it in. So multiply it by negative 3 and add 8, and we're going to get 56. Now we'll take that 56, and we'll plug it in. We'll plug it in for x sub 2, so it becomes negative 3 
times 56 plus 8, which becomes, uh, let's see here, negative 168 plus 8, it becomes negative 160. So again, uh, recursion, iteration, they're all based on the previous term, which is, again, different from what we were working on in the first few sections, because uh, the formulas were different, because we could find, um, you know, the hundredth term, but we didn't have to know the ninety-ninth whereas these are all based off of what the previous value were.